Welcome. This is another episode of Gaming Performance. I'm your host. I have returned with another video. And in this video, I have found the fix for latency in the games you play. So let us begin. There have been a lot of tweaks that you could apply to your PC and Windows that will allow you to get lower latency. And while those tweaks are isolated to just your PC, they don't always translate to what you do when you try to play competitively online. You know there's nothing wrong with your PC. Your PC has the lowest latency possible. So why why doesn't it translate to your online gaming so that you can get an advantage over opponents that normally wouldn't bother tweaking it, such as those that are on console? I'll explain why. Although those tweaks do work on your PC and they do lower latency, they are sandboxed to your PC only because nothing will translate until those packets are sent to the server. That is ultimately what you're trying to do. You're trying to be the fastest to register an input, go through your computer, go through your network system and reach that server first before your opponent. That is the whole gist of competency while playing first person shooter games online. Now I have a picture here. It says types of network devices that you have in your home. You could have a gateway, you can have a router, you can have a hub, access point, switch, bridge, etc. However, most of you, because anything other than a router or a gateway takes a little bit of networking knowledge to know how to use, why you would want to use them and how to properly set them up in your home. So let me explain what double NAT is. It occurs when two routers in a network perform NAT, creating two private network layers between your device and the internet. This setup can introduce latency and connectivity issues impacting performance in fast-paced first-person shooter games where low ping and stable connection are critical. And below I'll explain how double NAT causes problems and provide a demonstration of its impact. Why does double NAT cause issues in first-person shooter games? It increases latency. You're creating two private IP addresses that are going to a public public IP address it may provide some level of protection. However, processing those packets between two functional routers takes up time. That's even if you demilitarize one of them because it's still functioning as a router, which means that it has a firewall, etc. All those things are still in progress with that router functioning as a router, and that is going to cause latency. You get packet loss and jitter. You may think that it is the server or your internet provider, but it's you because you're going to get inconsistent packets being sent and received. The result in packet loss or jitter, which will disrupt the amount of gameplay that is smooth to you. You can also notice strict NAT, which some of you can get, will testify to. You get strict or moderate NAT because of it, and you'll have problems forwarding ports because if you don't forward ports on both the router and the modem and gateway that you're using, you're going to find out that you're not going to be able to chat with some people. The screen will tell you on the game that you have moderate NAT instead of being open, etc. Now here's a demonstration of it for you. You have your gateway with your internet provider and your router that you bought, and you're using both of them because this is the gaming router and this is just a typical gateway. You need to understand what a gateway is. In this day and age, internet service providers are no longer giving you modems, at least the majority of them or the more commonly known ones. They're giving you what's called a gateway. What is a gateway? A gateway allows you access to the services of the internet provider that you're using, such as telephone service, TV service, internet service, all wrapped up into one. Along Along with internet service, it has a built-in router, which allows you to connect up to four wired connections to your PC, printer, etc. For some reason, we forgot that this gateway is also a router and it can function fully as a router. But we decide to go out and buy another router due to the distance that you have to cable to get to your PC. For example, some homes may have a gateway which is in the basement, but you game in your bedroom. So that means you have to go up two flights of stairs, sometimes maybe one, and around a corner and go down the hallway, etc., which requires a lot of routing. You may require both wired and wireless connections in order to do your daily tasks. So it made sense to buy a router and I have no disagreements on that. We've all done it. However, doing so creates double NAT. And while using the internet for web browsing, getting your emails is just fine. When it comes to competitive gaming, you're now finding yourself several milliseconds behind the server and other opponents. And so you make an attempt to try to fix it through tweaking your PC 
to get the lowest latency possible. However, that's only half the fix. The other half is to remove double NAT. And here I'll show you a quick example. When you have single NAT, it's going to be the modem, the router, and your gaming PC. And that's it. If you have double NAT, you're going to have the modem, the router, another router, and the gaming PC. When you see router one, router two, you're thinking of two separate routers. But unfortunately, that is incorrect. The gateway that you're using has a router, but you conveniently forgot that. And it's a fully functioning router. It's not an independent router that you paid $150 to $500 for because of gaming. So take a look at this diagram. We typically think this is how internet works. We have a router, we have a gateway, we can use a switch, a bridge, a hub access point, and our gateway. And that's not how it works. We think this is the right way, but it's not. The correct way is that the gateway will always come first, at least in this country. You're always going to be given a gateway or you may have to buy one or purchase one. Some of you may try to think you're smarter than ISP and buy your own modem, which may only work for a while until they increase speeds. And then you all of a sudden paying for service for speeds you can't get because the modem that you purchase can't keep up. But I digress. But in any case, you're going to have some sort of device that's going to allow you internet and you only need one per house. In this case, at least in this country, it's going to be a gateway. That gateway can do multiple functions. It can work as a router for wired and wireless connections. It can provide you access to your TV so you can watch cable TV. It can even offer you phone service, etc. But it's all built into one. And that's all you really need unless you have issues with connectivity based on the placement of the gateway and where you need access to to it because you're not going to do all your work in the basement. You may want to do it in your office, which is upstairs or in your room. Running a long cable may not be the right answer or solution to your problem. It may present itself as additional latency, or you also may need wireless connectivity in order to function and do the things that you need to do in that room. This is where I introduce to you your router's ability that you purchased, you spent about 150 to $500 for, and you may have to convert it over from a router to another functioning network device. Depending on how it will function, you could make it into a bridge, you can make it into a switch, or you can make it into an access point. I know I have to scroll back up to show you this image, but you may be able to use your existing router without having to purchase another network device in order to create this functionality, which is built in most modern day routers. Doing so will remove the double NAT in its entirety because you will no longer be using that router to create private addresses it would all come from the gateway. Depending on your needs, you could probably make it into a switch or a hub, or you can just bridge the router and that would remove the double net and the latency. If you need both wired and wireless connection, an access point may be more of what you may need to do to the router if it's capable of doing so without buying additional hardware. This is the genuine fix to remove that additional latency that you've been experiencing in game, even though you're PC is optimized for the lowest latency possible. Not only will that translate to you reaching the server first, you will also notice that you will gain a competitive edge against your opponents and not feel like that you shoot first and die first. That will be a thing of the past. That is what causes shoot first to die first. You have double NAT, but you didn't understand that you had double NAT. In some cases, some of you may need to use an access point or bridge because the long extension of a network cable is not feasible for you to properly use your PC to gain an access with. Now, having said that, I think I thoroughly explained that enough. I had some examples here that you can read on your own. You can pause the video and read it, but basically double NAT causes hit registration issues, movement issues. It'll cause you to see strict or moderate NAT with some days you'll get open NAT and then you play the game again and it turns to strict NAT. It goes back and forth. You can't make rhyme or reason to it. That's all caused by double NAT. Below, I've shown you examples of how 
call double neck and increase your latency. And although it may not seem a lot, it fluctuates. And this is what I want to show you here. It'll fluctuate. This is green line is single net and the red one is double net. And as you can see, it fluctuates. It could go from what you think is one certain ping spike and then go down and then spike again. And it's inconsistent. Here's another example for it. Although this shows you averages of how much more latency you get, it's very inconsistent of how it gets to that point. And that is the importance that you need to learn from this is that it's not something you can measure across the board. So I thank you for your time. Have a nice day.